reason that the committee voted um, this is the fellow fellow with the conviction 19 years ago right um, well I was about to say is mr. Troy Murray here and yes um, okay. we, we held this matter so um, we could investigate. yeah there is a uh, uh, it, it is the opinion of the of the city attorney that state law, uh, if you've had a felony conviction, um, prevents this man from getting uh, a beverage operator's license, and um, it is the opinion of uh, of of the the man's brother who was a paralegal. And I, uh, although not an attorney, I did go to law school in Madison. It is my opinion. Uh, I agree with the applicant that. What the law says is that we as a municipality or, or the law and license as a committee cannot be sued if we do deny the license. It, it exempts, just like the, uh, the concealed carry law says, if a business doesn't put a sign up, they're exempt from being sued if there's gun violence on their property. When they put up the sign, that immunity goes away. This is this, this, the statute that's being cited by the city attorney to deny um, the license, it states that we cannot be sued as a city if we grant his license. It does not say we can't grant a license. Thank you. And with that, I'd uh, ask the city attorney to please comment. Just like to correct uh, Alderman Jose's uh, uh, statement of what my opinion is, it, it's not simply about felony convictions. Felony convictions in and of themselves do not make a person ineligible. If it were simply a felony conviction, the committee's role would be to weigh whether that felony conviction substantially relates to the licensed activity. However, there is a series of five particular convictions that a person is completely ineligible for a license if they have one of those convictions. Mr. Murray has one of those convictions basically for um, uh, providing uh, uh, drugs, selling drugs uh, to, to a person. Uh, in essence, there are three categories of people uh, who would apply for a liquor license. One are people who have no, uh, no criminal record of any kind. Those people are eligible for a license. People who have a, a criminal conviction of these five types are not eligible for a license. People who have criminal convictions of any other type, whether felonies, misdemeanors, then there has to be a weighing of whether they relate to the licensed activity. Uh, Alderman Jose's um, legal analysis and the paralegal's legal analysis just simply misses that there is an additional statute involved. Section 125.04, I can give you the, uh, the direct subsection, it's 125.04, subsection 5, subsections A and B. And that particular section does provide that a person is not eligible for a license if they have a criminal conviction, but subject then uh, to uh, the um, Fair Labor Act. The Fair Labor Act then simply provides that there are certain other situations in which that comes around. Because of 12504 sub 5, uh, that whole issue of you just can't get sued because of it doesn't apply in this situation because we do have a specific uh, statute on site. So uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, my legal opinion uh, that uh, Mr. Murray happens to be ineligible for this license uh, unless uh, he becomes uh, pardoned, he is not currently pardoned of that offense, um, and currently the governor is not pardoning anyone, uh, or uh, he gets the case reopened, uh, which he has indicated that he will be trying to do. Thank you for those comments. Next is Alderperson Liss uh, Holshue. Um, I was just going to reiterate that he was denied um, by our committee due to his conviction of manufacturing and delivering of THC felony bail jumping and possession of drug paraphernalia. And as advised by our legal counsel, he's ineligible to receive a beverage operator's license. Thank you for those comments. Would the clerk please call the roll for passage.
14 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred Charter Ordinance Number 2 of 1617 by Alderperson Holshue, Heidemann, Jose Schneider, Thiel, and Trester being the subject of Home Rule Provisions of 66. Uh, 0101 of the Wisconsin statutes to maintain the number of alder persons in the city of Sheboygan at 16 and recommends that the charter ordinance be passed. Alder person Donahue. Um, <laughs> although I shall vote against it, I would move to accept and adopt and put the charter ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Uh, the item is uh, before you for discussion. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. I have a little, I've taken personal notes because sometimes I go off the street here. As this has been discussed at length, I would just like to add my personal point of view regarding this issue. It's been stated that this issue came to be um, passed in previously with much discussion and we shouldn't change a charter. How it would appear to prosper business dealings in the future? It would be in question because we're going back and changing a charter. I would like to state that there was not a lengthy discussion about this when it came for us to pass. It was brought forward and we passed it. So that being said, what does an alder do in a case where a vote has been made and after time has passed in realizing that the choice was made was a wrong one. What do we do as elders to correct that change? More often than not, we do not always have the time needed to perhaps research and contemplate. I say as elders on this council, what is more appropriate, leaving the status quo or taking the steps necessary to correct an error? Does one look at a committee or a council in a different light for correcting an issue and bringing it up for discussion once again? I personally would like to correct any errors I've made in my years on council. Bringing this forward is doing just that. I would not judge anyone that is taking the effort and believes that making mistakes is human. Correcting them is character. <coughs> I voted yes to the 10 aldermen on that vote and I'm standing before you today to state for the record that I made a mistake in casting that vote. And I believe that 16 alder persons are what are required. The people deserve representation. The committees deserve attendance. The council deserves a think tank that is diverse with the ability to tap into different specialties. Clearly, it is not a monetary issue. And honestly, I don't think this issue with many of our constituents is, forms a leading form of di dispute between them. The issue for me is representation, attendance, and dutiful service to the aldermatic position, which is accomplished in 16 seated alder persons. In this discussion, we have had many references to history and presidents, and I can't feel like I can let this opportunity go without adding my own reference. And this is coming from the highest source I know, Ecclesiastes 4.9. Two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. And John Hayward then went on to say, two heads are better than one. I'm hoping that you'll support this issue. Um, we had it rewritten so many times. And with the help of our city attorney, I think we have it in a legal format that will work. Those of us um, who did vote yes and, and had time to reconsider, do believe 16 aldermen is what is needed for the representation of our constituents. I struggle with quorums. I struggle with participation. I struggle with think tanks. If we're reducing to 10, we're gonna have two people on committees. So again, I know this is gonna be a long discussion yet again, but I hope that um, you'll vote in favor of this as I am. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Jose. I uh, want to agree with and, and support everything that Elder Person Holshu said and add a few more viewpoints. Um, I think that going down to only one Elder Person per district gives less representation. Uh, if we look at the way our, our federal government is set up, every state has two senators. So you can look at a state like a district. We should keep it at two. I brought up this idea uh, a couple of meetings ago. 
if you if if you if you so badly want uh, the district and the representation to mirror what's happening at the um, the to mirror the, the 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 lines that the county board supervisors have uh, for their districts, if that's so important, increase keep keep your ten keep the ten districts, but then elect two aldermen per district and go with twenty alder persons because. Four, four more older people is only going to be about $25,000. It's a drop in the bucket of the budget. Conversely, going down six older people, saving the salary of 4400 or whatever it is, is not, is, is, isn't going to, wouldn't pave the road from here to the next desk uh, on, on any street. So it's not, it, as Alterman Holster said, it's not a money issue, um, but it is a representation issue. And um, I sure think that it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna create more work for the existing all our people. It's very ironic that four of the people that voted for this, then, then within six months after voting for it, either resigned their positions, or didn't run for re-election. Um, after they created more work for the other ten, for the ten aldermen that will be left over, um, it's uh, the mayor has only f has five standing committees, and it's tough to get enough people to staff those committees now. And what's it going to be like when you got six less aldermen to try and uh, to run all those standing committees? Thank you for those comments, Alderperson Herman. Thank you. <coughs> I concur with uh, Alderperson Holshu. Two heads are better than one. If you don't have sixteen, you're not going to have the representation. Um, if a certain older person is not available. You have a backup. I believe there's strength in numbers. Uh, things are working very well in Sheboygan. It's a, it's a thriving, growing community with 16. I believe most of the cities in uh, southeastern Wisconsin are still, in the surrounding areas of Sheboygan, are still going to the 16 member format. If you don't have 16, you're not going to, in terms of committees, you're going to have like two people on a committee and one or two people could control the meeting and control the vote and that's not fair. I prefer to keep it at 16 and that's not going to change. Thank you very much for those comments. Alder Person Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too uh, did vote yes to this originally without very little time to uh, really think about how it was going to be set up. Um, what really got me to change my mind is when I saw the setup, uh, how we're going to set our committees up, how many members we're going to be, that's what I really got the, the wheels turning on, on what we actually did here. Um, I go back to the last meeting I had of public protection and safety. We have five members on that, on that committee. <coughs> Two of them were unable to make it. So right there it gave me an example of having a three-person committee. And it was pretty obvious how control it was going to be. I mean, like uh, older person Herman said, two people pretty much control, can control that committee with no problems. Um, and I don't think that's fair to anybody applying for a license or um, for any type of thing that needed to get voted on. Um, I, I just really saw that vision happening if we go to 10. And I think we really, really need to think about that. Um, also, we wouldn't have had a meeting if two people wouldn't have showed up. That meeting would have been canceled. So if we went to know ahead of time, we get to the meeting, two people don't show up, everybody was there, it's canceled, we're done, we don't have a quorum. That's not fair to those people. Um, I really think we just need to think this through, and I don't think we did the first time. And I think now we've had some time to think about it. Um, I did take some time to look at a few other uh, communities, see how many people they have as far as older persons and stuff. Um, it goes from us being at 16, the cross at 17, which I was surprised with, West Allis 10, Wauwatosa has 16, Fond du Lac had 7. Um, they're all within close vicinity of our population and stuff. Um, some a little less, some a little higher. Um, a couple of them got back to me as far as how much each one of them gets, you know, paid for their annual services. La Crosse is actually going up to, in 2017, they're going to get six thousand. West Allis is given seventy three hundred dollars. We get around forty seven hundred dollars, I do believe. Um, I think for sixteen people, for what we do, forty seven hundred dollars is pretty good. I don't think we need to go to ten. 
just sit in a committee that has three members, and I think you'll understand uh, what's going on. So I support keeping it at 16, and I think we got it written right thanks to our attorney. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Alderman Herman, did you have something else? Right. Please go ahead. I want my tenure decided by the people that elected me, by the taxpayer. I wish this had gone to a referendum because I think that would be the fairest way to do it, but that idea was shot down. Not to be disrespectful, but I don't want my tenure decided by two previous older people who no longer sit on this council came up with the idea to reduce it from 16 to 10. It's rather strange that they're not here, but anyway, I want my tenure decided by the people that elected me and your tenures should be decided by that same standard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alder Person <coughs> Truster. I just wanted to make one brief statement, and that is I have told my constituents that I am always available for them, and I have been, and my phone rings off the hook or they knock on my door. I don't see how I could be a better alderman or as good as I am for them if I had to have a greater population to serve. And thank by going down to 10, I would have more. Okay, thank you very much. City Attorney, would you please review the votes needed for passage on a charter ordinance? Right, so um, in order to pass, uh, you will need um, 11 votes in favor because it does uh, require a two-thirds vote. Uh, and in essence, what it does is increases the number of districts from eight to 10. So you'll actually have a smaller, um, a smaller district, but there will only be one alder person in each district then. Thank you, alder person Lewandowski. I just wanna add a few things that haven't been brought up, but if we go down to 10 aldermen, each one of us is gonna have a lot more work because the constituents can't try to get hold of one of two aldermen. They gotta to try to get hold of only one alderman and that one alderman will have to uh, see what they want and try to solve it. Also, if somebody is on vacation or gets sick, that means that those districts will not have any representation at common council <coughs> meetings. Thank you very much. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. Um, for me, it's not a matter of more work. That doesn't frighten me. What matters to me is the number of people are attending committee meetings, but I am all in favor of a think tank. The more people we have out here, the more specialties we can grasp at. Our constituents deserve that. We as aldermen deserve to have other people to bounce things off of. I just don't think it's a matter of us having to do more work because I, I just am not buying into that. I just think I am so strongly, so strongly changed my mind that the representative of our constituents should be paramount. And I really don't believe that they're as concerned about this issue as we are. A referendum, I, I just, I think if we're gonna do referendums, we should do those in regards to city halls and, and um, other things that are more relevant than how many people are here because they voted 16 in. I don't know if this has ever come before the council before my time and I've been here five years. I'm just um, really adamant that the, we cut it down, you are gonna put more work and find less candidates for these positions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Alderperson uh, Donahue. Um, <clears throat> we, are, we are getting pretty good at talking about things sort of over and over again, and so I'll keep my remarks short. Um, I <clears throat> really don't think that it is a particularly good argument um, to keep the council at the size that it is because we can't make quorums at committee meetings and because people don't respond to phone calls and that sort of thing. If you're elected, you do the job. Um, as Alder Person Thiel pointed out, there are a number of communities that have bigger uh, councils. There are a number that have smaller. Green Bay, which is a city at least twice the size of Sheboygan, um, has 11 alders and somehow business goes on and, and business gets done. 
we have, in fact, spent a fair amount of time developing a plan to make this a very workable proposition in a workload that is reasonable and that looks at a different way of doing business, a more efficient way, ways that businesses just normally do it. So whether we, whether we stay at 16 or 10, it's really not the end of the world. I just want to warn you, if it changes in 2015 and it changes in 2016, it can change in 2017, it can change in 2018. This is a charter ordinance. This is not, you know, whether we're granting somebody a license or whether we're granting a zoning request. This is really pretty serious stuff as reflected by the vote that's needed. I'm saying this because I just think that we need to keep in mind that precedent, I would agree, is not everything. But if you're telling our citizens that they can't rely on something as basic as the number of people who are going to be running for office, then I think that is of greater concern. So as I say, whatever happens will happen, and we should just move on and, and, and attend, to, uh, attend to other business. But I, 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 think, um, I think a think tank of 10 motivated, concerned, and highly involved citizens is as good as a think tank of 16, some of whom, as Alderman Holshue has pointed out, don't come to meetings, don't pay attention. Thanks. Thank you very much. Alderperson Herman. <laughs> I was thinking about this. If you, if you cut it from 16 to 10, you may as well increase the pay because if it's down to 10, you're asking this many people to do this much work for the same amount of money. I, I just think things are working well with 16. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Let's keep it where it is. Thank you. Alderperson Jose. Uh, I got to say, if you had 16 people rowing a boat uh, and you proposed that 10 of them should row the boat by themselves, uh, I think maybe the person, the the pe person or the people making the proposal will probably be thrown out of the boat uh, uh, by the people that are doing the rowing. Um, that's just a, a clever analogy, but it's also on the same analogy. It's very interesting. If it it must have took 11 votes, correct? I think it was 12 to 4, but I, I think it took 11 votes to pass it the other way, right? Well, it's interesting that that four of the people that voted yes are no longer here, and without those four, they would have they would have had uh, seven, not enough votes to, to to lower it to 10 in the first place. So you might say they jumped ship after the after the after they got rid of some of the oarsmen. Thank you. All the person born. Thank you. Mary. I call the question. Second. Is, Thank you. Is there any objection to cutting off discussion? Seeing none, we'll ask the clerk to call the roll. <clears throat> Everybody know what you're voting on? And I vote means. Uh, uh, it's to make it 16, right? Uh, it's to pass the charter ordinance. A yes would be to pass the charter that's presented right here. That's keeping it at 16. Pardon? That's keeping it at 16. To maintain 16. Okay. Okay. Nine, yes, six, no. Uh, motion fails. Item uh, 6.5 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred resolution number 107 of 1617, direct referral by Alderperson Donahue Wolf, drawn regarding the advisory referendum question related to the size of the Common Council in the city of Sheboygan, recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. In light of the vote, I move to file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion on the floor then is a motion to file 5.6. Is there any discussion? 6.5. Or 6.5. Alder Person Holshue? Yes, thank you. In light of the vote, what if we, we want to have it go to referendum at this point? That's your question. Legal, uh, I have to ask, what do we have a first and a second? I'm going to encourage us that we pass this and let the spe people speak finally. Have the, our constituents have the last word at this point. So I'm not in favor of filing this at all. Okay, thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Person Bourne. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not going to uh, support this going to a referendum. If it goes, if it's if it's a referendum and it's an advisory referendum, and it comes back here, my understanding would still take 11 votes. Then, right? Correct. So, uh, you know, if you're going to make it a, rec a referendum, then making make it a binding referendum. But I think we're just wasting our time if it's advisory. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Alderperson Jose. I think a referendum and the people being heard is, is never a waste of time. Um, I think that uh, the value can be this. If the people vote that they want to keep it at 16 aldermen and we bring it to another vote and the people that vote against it, raising it back to 16, then the citizens know who to vote out of office at the next election. Thank you for those comments. So, you know, uh, other lights, Alder Person Holshue, did you want? Yes, I have a question. How do, um, do I make a friendly motion to make this a binding referendum? Well, first of all, have... that's not germane to the motion at hand, which is to file. Um, the reason that uh, the, it came as an advisory referendum is that the statutes really don't provide for a binding referendum. You could call it a binding referendum, the council could still disobey it so that we shouldn't do a binding referendum if in fact we get to that point it's it's not really a binding referendum you could call it that um, but it's not really one so then people saying that it would be a, a um, referral referendum and not a binding one there really is no difference right there is there is no binding referendum for these kinds of things the state statutes actually list a number of items for which binding referenda are either required or permissible. This is not one of them. So this would just be the voice of our constituents? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so the, the motion on the floor is a motion to file. Will the clerk please call the roll? Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item 6.6, .6, which is an RC by salary and grievances. To whom is referred resolution number 114 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue adopting the 2017 City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non represented employees and recommends that the resolution be passed along with the amended 2017. City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to accept uh, and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had intentions on attending the salary and grievance meeting and uh, something came up that I couldn't, but a question that I had for uh, Chairperson Donahue, or if there's somebody here from HR, is that in consideration of this pay increase, uh, I, know, I know from reading some of the documents that they went out and looked at, I guess, private sector positions like uh, positions as far as salary, was the benefit package uh, for the city employees also, also taken into consideration in comparison to the private sector before recommending this 2% uh, wage increase? Thank you. Sandy Rourke, would you like to come forward and answer that question? Thank you. The answer is yes. We look at total compensation. Okay. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh, I popped up. It said I lost connection, so I didn't know if it was working. Yes, no. I think it might have went through. I don't know. It did go through. It said you lost connection. 13 eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me, two no's. Motion passes. 
Next item is 6.7, an RC by salary and grievances. To whom is referred resolution number 115 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue authorizing the city to establish and maintain a voluntary term life policy beginning January 1st of 2017 and recommends that that resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under discussion, Alderperson Jose. I just have a, a question. Is this, uh, is this something that the city would have to contribute to, like we contribute to a portion of the uh, health care insurance? Would we have to contribute to a portion of the life insurance premiums, or would that all be paid for by the, by the employee choosing whether they have the, the term life or not? We would not be contributing. It would be to the employee's option, and they would pay for it. Alderperson Holshue. Yes, we, I'm assuming then... Because I am not, I, I, I don't have any understanding of this. Do we offer that now? No, we do not. So we're, this would be something bonus? to add to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? The clerk, please call the roll for passage. Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is an RC by finance. To whom is referred resolution number 110 of 1617 by Alderperson Bourne authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish an appropriation for the settlement of an NRFC Memorial Holdings LLC for a refund of excessive 2014 real estate taxes and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Alderperson Boren. I don't have anything. Okay. Um, no, seeing no discussion, all those in no, let's see, we have to call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.9 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 102 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriation in the 2016 budget, establishing an estimated revenue and appropriation for forfeiture funds received by the police department and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Under discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Uh, under other matters, um, both 7.1 and 7.2 be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee, and I'll turn it over to the City Attorney for other items. Yep, 7.1 is a general ordinance uh, by Alderperson Bellinger, uh, repealing and recreating Article 4 of Chapter 30 of the Municipal Code relating to the sales of drug paraphernalia and repealing and recreating Section 70-8 of the Municipal Code entitled Adoption of State Law regarding controlled substances. 7.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. Thank you, and again, those will go to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 1985 sub 1 sub e of uh, Wisconsin statutes for competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to redevelopment opportunities for the Founders Club LLC and a development opportunity in the 600 block of North 9th Street. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Ask the clerk to call the roll on closed session.
14 ayes, one no. Motion passes. I'd just like to advise our viewers at home that we will be adjourning in closed session, so this will end the broadcast of the City Council meeting for this evening. We'll take a three-minute recess and reconvene.